So hi there again. So we're going to look at uh, these enolates and this is part 2C. Uh, this is basically covering conjugate addition, which is also known as the micro addition or the micro reaction. Um, one of the main areas we'll be focused on is the stork enemy and the Robinson ring annulation. But before that, I'll explain to you exactly what this conjugate addition is. First of all, uh, look at these guys here, because uh, they have here uh, the acceptor, and you recognize the acceptor as a type of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl in this case, or in this case it's a ketone, but it's still a non-saturated um, alpha beta uh, or alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl with this so-called unsaturated ester. These act as your Michael acceptor. On the other hand, you have your donors, and you recognize that these species, which are precursors to your enolates, will act as your donor. So if I remove a proton from this alpha carbon, then of course, the enolate that is produced are going to donate to in this case, interestingly enough, the beta carbon of the Michael acceptor. So generalize, you think about it here, we have electron withdrawing species that can stabilize our enolate. And here we have a species where we have alpha beta on saturation, which is conjugated. This species here, yeah, which is the result of the Michael donor and Michael acceptor is called the Michael adduct. The Michael adduct. Hope my spelling is right. So I'm going to shorten it to an M. If we move on, this is your Michael reaction. So first of all, let's explain. So here we have a one, two. In this case, the Grignard, which has a hard charge density, will attack the carbon of the carbonyl. And therefore, we have a one, two addition. Look at it carefully. If I call this carbon one, carbon two, and carbon three, and carbon four. Well, not this is not a carbon. Come on. Yeah, atom one, yeah. Then we've added R and H across atoms one and two, hence one, two. Because if you note, we have a degree of unsaturation here and a degree of unsaturation here. So that's two degrees of unsaturation. And now we remain with one. On the other hand, if we have a Michael attack, i.e., say for example, a Gilman's, we end up with this species, which, as you can see, has lost a degree of unsaturation. But why is it called 1 4? Well, for that, we have to take a closer look. Let's have a closer look. If we Look at this enone, which is also an alpha beta unsaturated species, conjugated species, Michael acceptor. If we look at it carefully and say, for example, we add our Gilman's to this species. I think this is a review because we did this earlier, but we add a Gilman. This is a Gilman reagent, right? It's much softer, so it's attacked to be the carbon. Then, of course, you can see that we'll end up with this intermediate. This intermediate is then quenched by a proton. So you can pick up a proton from water yeah, or something when you quench it. So 
let's get that water in there. Uh, I won't even show the arrow movement right now, but get that water in there, and you can see immediately you have an E null. Here is the E null. I seem to be running out of space, but if we look closely at that E null, you remember that E nulls will tautomerize to give you carbonyls. In this case here, we have a, an aldehyde, because it's a terminal E null, the, oxy, the oxygen, the hydroxy group, is at the end of the chain. You see? So at the end of the double bonds. So here we have the tautomerization, and we have our carbonyl. So that's what's tautomerized. The rest of it stays the same. The reason why it's called a one core is that if you note a proton is added on one and a nucleophile is added on four and hence it's called a one four. You can see that in the enolic stage, but you cannot see it properly in this aldehydic stage, but it is a one four addition. Let's move on. So here we have a detailed mechanism of the fella. You can see that there is simply attack. You can deprotonate that in attack, of course, and the acceptor. And we should recognize this. This is our uh, beta uh, ester. They're very, very good at um, being micro donors. Yeah? So we can use the base to get this species, and then of course attack. What we should make a note of is that, like all good enolates, there is no change in the general structure of that enolate. Because all you've done with the enolate is you've deprotonated one alpha proton. Yeah. And so you can think of that as our nuke, not think of it as our nuke. It is our nuclear file, yeah. adding to the beta position, is it? So why don't you think of it like this? Why don't you go ahead and do that mechanism, do this mechanism here, and then go ahead and play with this mechanism. I will pause right here. There are a wealth of uh, Michael Donners, yeah, and you can see that we have the gilnes that we've done in the past, but we're going to be looking at enolates. So you can see here an interesting e enolate that's stabilized by nitrile, and this one is quite beautiful. It's stabilized by nitrile. Here we have um, lots of um, microacceptors, and of course we have a microacceptor with a nitro, yeah, as the species that's unsaturated and then we have here an amide and here we got an unsaturated ketone very nice i personally would practice mechanisms with this because they don't make things a lot easier when it comes to the exam here you can see that we have a number of products that are based on the micro reaction or we think are based on the micro reaction it's asking you to find out which one is based on the micro reaction and I personally, I'm going to pause it right here 
and then you try to figure it out, okay? I hope you pause. Now, as you can see, yeah, all we got to do for the my call is identify, yeah, where your my call acceptor was. Your my call acceptor was some type of known, i.e., some sort of alpha, beta, untitled system. You can see here for this carbon ion here, yeah, we have what could have been the remnants of an alpha carbon and a beta carbon of a Michael acceptor. And so you can think of this as the acceptor. And of course, that diketone, this diketone, I should say, as the donor here. This is the disconnect. Yeah? Right. The same thing here. Alpha, beta, of the original alpha, beta, disconnect, yeah, and then this is going to be your acceptor, because now it's a hydrogen, and this is your donor. Sorry about that, that's not a double bond, that's just when the pen being problematic. You can see here, if I disconnect here, I only have an alpha carbon. I do not have access to beta that would have been acceptable. So this fella is absolutely out of the picture. Here, yeah. We, we can cover this in class, but it's quite simple. Yeah, you can see here, this is your inner lay. This is the going to be your nucleophilic center. So this is the inner lay. This is the new bond that was formed. So that was where your original beta carbon was your alpha carbon to yeah the Michael acceptor so of course once you make this disconnect then this should be the resulting Michael acceptor you should try to name this and see if it's correct uh, you can see if you can find uh, exactly what the option is here. And you and I can see that, of course, it's uh, uh, not our preference to do the two over here because we've got this alkene over here. So we call it 2 6. So it's a 2 6 dimethyl file. And so this aniline is out. And then, of course, you can see that we have a hexanone because it is a ketone. We have a hexanone. And so hexanone. So we have an ohm. Cyclo species own. But of course, yeah, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that because you can see here we got an alkene. Yeah, it's an enone. So, yeah, so this hexane system, of course, is gone because it was a, we knew it was some sort of hexanone system. And then, of course, because we have that enone, then this, of course, is fine. So that leaves us with option C. The mechanism that you did earlier on, that I asked you to work on the other um, earlier on, is of course this fellow, where we deprotonate, in this case, the enolate. So deprotonate the Michael donor to form an enolate. And then, of course, you can see the donation to the beta position of that. We're going to have some electron movement here, and then some electron movements to there. And so that lone pair is going to reside on the oxygen. We end up with our alkoxide our intermediate. I personally do not use the mechanism where I quench to form the enol. I find that a long winded route. I realize in my mechanism that this, yeah 
species is an enolate here. So of course I can easily protonate the alpha carbon. Let's point that out to you. This is an enolate. Yeah? And so really I am protonating that that should give you your product. It's very nice because your product, if you notice here, yeah, is that of yeah, substitution of the acetocitric ester. And so we can easily proponiticate followed by decarboxylation. And so we end up with this very interesting compound, which is a one, two, three, three, four, five. So it's a one, five dicarbonyl. And it has what we call a hanging methyl. This species here is enolizable. We're going to look at that later on when we do the Robinson emulation. Let's move on. This is a problem that you can tackle, yeah, because now we're talking about the melonic ester. There's no workup. We just tackle it with the melonic ester, yeah, and you can try to realize your product from there. We'll cover that in class. Here is another problem that I want you to cover before we commence in class. And this is, of course, this shows you an unsaturated species that is not an enone. And I want you to generate the product from that. Here's also a nice question, because now this question, if you notice, why, what we've done is we're working up with acid and this is a molonic ester, yeah? and so and you notice we've got a number of options here, right? So it's a play on nomenclature. So remember that LDA is a rather good group, so I need you also to work on this question, and then we will talk about this in class. This mechanism or there's a number of mechanisms, yeah, number of steps to form thiamine from uracil. We talked about this in the past, where we realized by now that there are advantages to having thiamine as part of your structure. So DNA has thiamine, yeah, but RNA has uracil. And the reason why, of course, is that if you think about it, RNA has this interesting double bond, which undergoes a 2 pi, 2 pi cyclization in the presence of light. Yes, the 2 pi, 2 pi cycloaddition is, yeah, results in, yeah, that sort of thing, yes. And One thing we realize by now is that in the case of thiamine, because thiamine is really methyl uracil, then that 2 pi 2 pi cycloaddition is a little bit more difficult. And of course, we talked about the fact that if you have a mutation in RNA, it's okay because we produce copious amounts of it. On the other hand, if it happens in DNA, we're going to be in a lot of problem. So this I will talk about in class, and you're going to be surprised yeah, at how s simple this mechanism is. I want you to look at this carefully. This is called the stork enamine reaction. It's going to be um, you're going to have an enamine, and you're going to react it with a Michael acceptor. 
So the question is, I'm asking you, is which one is the nucleophile? And you and I know that the enamine is the nucleophile. Why? Because this acceptor is accepting electrons. It's always the electrophile, yes? What I want to show you is why the enamine is nucleophilic. And the way we can show that is if we look closely at the enamine, look at this enamine. If we look at this resonance structure, I push the electrons into here and take this one and put it out here. It's quite reasonable. If we look at this resonance structure, we will note that, see, we got tetravalent nitrogen. Now we have a carbon and ion here. We will note that this carbon alpha to the nitrogen, right, to that amino group, is nucleophilic. So this alpha carbon is nucleophilic. Generally, we use the stalk enamine like this. So this is your stalk enamine. We will have a step where we make our enamine. We use a proton catalyst, of course, with the secondary amine and the ketone. In this case, for some reason, pyrrolidine is always a really good species to use for the stalk enamine. And we end up with our enamine, which then attacks our micro acceptor, our enone, attacks it at the beta carbon. And of course, we end up with our alkoxide intermediate, which is an inhalate which can be quenched, so we're really missing that step. Why don't you find a way to put that step in for me? And then, of course, you can see that we will end up with this guy. Right? From there, yes, we can recover our enemy. And you should realize by now that hydrolysis of your enamine here results in recovery of your ketone. So it's a deanimation process. It's a very nice reaction. Now, what I want you to also think about is why is it that we're using uh, the stalk enamine? Wouldn't it be just reasonable to just deprotonate cyclohexanone with a hydroxide, for example? Have a think about that and we'll discuss this in class. The product of this stalking mean is a one, two, three, four, five. So it's a one five diketone. And it has a and it has here a tangy methyl. The idea we're looking at is, of course, the intramolecular aldol. Do that for us, yeah, while I pause. And then we're going to be looking at the Robinson annulation. So please, please pause right here and try to do an intramolecular aldol with this species. We move on.
this is the Robinson annulation and quite simply put right we have here a species that can act as a donor and of course we have our e known which acts as our acceptor so Michael Donner Michael acceptor the resulting compound is a species that has a cyclic enone not only a cyclic enone but a hexanone right so it's a cyclic six membered ring enone and it's a very useful the mechanism is quite simple we have initially a Michael attack and then of course the Michael attack remember this coupling right what it would do it will give you a coupling just a loss upon saturation and so you would end up with a one two three four five a one five diketone with a hanging me file and then that can be analyzed via uh, aldol and give you your aldol now let's have a look at it carefully because the whole thing is going to give you a one two three four five six membered ring let's have a look at it again it's terribly important so we have first of all our Michael donor acceptor then it's followed by an intramolecular aldol of course followed by the condensation so Herein is the disconnect for the Michael, and herein is the disconnect for the aldol condensation. So, what I would like you to do is I would like you to tackle a reaction mechanism like this. So, we have here Michael Donner, Michael Sector to give us a Michael adduct, and then of course, note the analyzable methyl ketone, our hanging methyl, and that can then go off to give us our intramolecular aldol followed by the condensation. The mechanism looks like this you can see here initially we have deprotonation to give us our enolate our enolate which is a, which is the donor will hit the enone which is our michael acceptor there's the coupling right here which of course we quench out that enolate and this is our ketone Mephal ketone, I hang in mephal, one, two, three, four, five, so the one, five diketone with hanging mephal, and so we generate an enol so that we can use it in the intramolecular aldol. Quench out, we end up with our aldol, and then of course you can see the elimination. This is the E1CB followed by yeah, um, the product. Please, yes, um, do this reaction. 
the mechanism for it. And I will discuss it in class. Here is another problem. I think it's quite nice because here you have a play with nomenclature. So one of these options relates to yeah, the product that you get from these reactants. Realize that this is going to be your donor. So this is the donating center because that's the most acidic carbon. And there it's going to hit this species here, which is a zero acceptor. So that's the micro. And here is going to be the alcohol. Okay. So in this case, uh, we're looking at retrosynthesis uh, of uh, Robinson. So you can see here, for example, yeah, that we're trying to get to the starting materials that we use to get to this cyclic enone. The first step in your retrosynthesis is to identify the cyclohexanone ring and which you know is the process of the aldol. Yeah? So the process of the aldol, you gotta find that disconnect, which is there. And then determine the micro adduct. Yeah, and you know for a fact that yeah, you gotta figure out a hanging knee file. And then identify the acceptor and the donator. So there's the aldol, and that will be disconnect between the donor and the acceptor of the micro reaction. Here we have also one other problem. By the way, we'll do those in class. And here we have also a, another problem. And you can see that in this case, I'm asking you yeah, for those starting materials. So remember, this is the final step, the condensation. And of course, this would have been your micro. And that ends the whole um, slides of enolate chemistry. Yes, whatever um, we haven't covered in these slides, yeah, if they're not on the PDF files that we have on web courses, then I will cover them in class and in tutorials, um, i.e. office hours uh, next week. Uh, I'll see you then.